Okay, now here's a few more poses that you can use in your pictures. We'll have a look at these when we trace them down in a second, but I've just shown you this now so you can see how the blocking in system and the basic shapes works with these. Right, now you can see we've got four dogs here that would conveniently sit in the background or even possibly the foreground of any landscape picture. Here we've got a little Scotty dog. I always seem to have a little sad look on the face, don't they, when you can see their eyes because it's usually covered by hair. Now here's a border collie which looks like it's in the middle of shepherding some sheep into the pen. And I'm just putting a pale grey wash on because that'll dry back very, very light and it'll still look quite white when we come to put the black areas on. But we'll let that dry off for now. Now this is based on a dog of my cousins called Phoebe. Now she's a gorgeous dog both in looks and in nature, but by gum she knows it. But I have never known a dog so ready to pose, even before you ask her, as soon as you produce the digital camera. It's uncanny. What I'm doing is just putting a very light wash of raw sienna and a touch of burnt umber to give that very pale golden look. Now I'm putting a very pale pink wash with permanent rose on the underbelly and that's quite a common feature on many dogs in that uh, area. Right now this is a sketch of my sister's dog called Jake. That's a dog not my sister, she's Julie. And this was a sketch taken when he was a puppy two or three years ago. He loves himself and he loves being around people and he loves being mollycoddled. Well, they all do, don't they? Just, I'm probably not going to put much more into uh, to Jake than that, other than a little bit of shadow when it's dried off a bit. Now, I'm going to use some of the grey colour I've used on the border collie, but I'm just going to paint it in very, very roughly like that. I'm just swirling the brush around it. And that sort of represents the waviness of the dog's coat. Now you can see just using a mixture of brown and blue we've created a nice grey black for ourselves and just by dragging out with the tip of the brush a slightly thicker mix it gives us that little bit of roughness where the white fur and the black fur sort of overlap. Coming back to Phoebe I'll just add a little bit of shadow underneath her belly and here and there I'm assuming the light is coming from the top right on her hair, so she'll have a little bit of shadow on that side of her face. Right, just put a hint of those limpid brown eyes that she flashes at you when it suits her. Right, now you can see I've just put some streaks of darker tan colour over the top of the uh, of Jake, just to give him a bit of extra colour and I've mixed a tiny little bit of ultramarine with this tan colour just to put a little bit of shadow underneath his body. I'm not going to leave it like that, it doesn't need any more. Now for a little Scotty dog. I'm going to use the rigger and I'm going to use again the same shadow colour as I've used here. Now I'm just using the rigger, you can see immediately it's getting that real impression of those curly hairs on this little dog. Now our little Scotty friends invariably have a yellowy brown tinge around the mouth and also around the feet. I think it's to do with the fact that there's so many hairs around the mouth inevitably it gets stained and dirty and never actually gets a chance to get clean. And the way to deal with this is just by a touch of raw sienna with a little bit of light red added. Dab it in as you can see like that and then blot it out with the paper towel. Go back in and out again if necessary till you get the tone just right. And the same for the feet. And there we go. Four more dogs for your collection in your watercolour paintings.